Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, What Did God See in Enoch?, Dr. McLuhan offers insights on why God enjoyed walking and talking with Enoch. In the course of history, there have only been two human beings who were taken to heaven by God without needing to die. What amazing experience that must have been. Today, we'll hear the story of how God walked Enoch into the splendor of heaven. Now, while some Islamic scholars say that Idris, mentioned in the Quran, is the same Enoch found in the Bible, the details about God personally walking and talking with Enoch are only found in the Word of God. The Bible tells us that Enoch was born in the seventh generation from Adam. More importantly, the Bible says, when Enoch lived to 65 years, he fathered Methuselah, and Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah for 300 years. Genesis chapter 2, or chapter 5, verse 21 and 22. That simple phrase, Enoch walked with God, distinguishes Enoch from all the other descendants in the genealogy of Adam. In Genesis chapter 5, we read the names of eight men who died. It's a very stark contrast between the life of Enoch and the death these other men experienced. These men proved that what God said to Adam and Eve in the garden was exactly right. If you eat of the forbidden fruit, you will die. Enoch wanted more from life than waiting for his time to die. Enoch caught a vision of what living to the fullest could be like. He was not satisfied with fulfilling his duty of having children and working the land that he inherited. He positioned himself for an encounter with God. God saw in Enoch something that he did not see in any of the other descendants of Adam. In the very beginning, we read that God loved walking and talking with Adam and Eve in the garden. God saw something in Enoch, someone with whom he could walk and talk again. Now, how is that possible? Uh, Prophet Amos showed us the way on how we can have a conversation with God. Amos chapter 3 says, How can two walk together except they be in agreement? And God found in Enoch someone whose heart was in tune with his own heart. Enoch and God could not have walked together for 300 years if their hearts were not united in agreement. Because it's been said you can talk without walking, but you cannot walk without talking. Now, technically, you could go on a long walk and not say a word, but that wouldn't be possible to do for 300 years. There should be no doubt that Enoch and God had many long conversations about the worsening conditions of the world. Does that sound like the world we're in? And God's plan. He talked about God's plan to redeem people from the curse of sin. And today, I will attempt to answer the question, what did God see in Enoch? We don't have to look very far for an answer to this question. As we turn to Hebrews chapter 11, we read these words, By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5. And so what did God see in Enoch? I'd like to suggest that God saw in Enoch a man of faith. That is what Hebrews chapter 11 is all about. It's not about people who earned favor with God or who earned enough favor with God because of their good works to get in the inside with God. No, in this chapter, we read about the faith exercised by these great men and women of God. The writer says that these people died without seeing the one in whom they had placed their faith. And we are still looking for that Messiah the promised one. They died looking for that promised one that Jesus had said to Adam and Eve would come one day. The coming of this Messiah 
would crush the head of Satan and pay for the sins of everyone to be forgiven. These heroes were saved by putting their faith in the coming one and not by any good deeds that they could have done to please God. It is said of each person mentioned in this list that God commended them or God spoke well of them for a whole variety of reasons, the primary of which is their faith. Hebrews tells us exactly what happened to Enoch. He was taken to heaven without dying. Before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5. God said that he was pleased with Enoch. and It's possible to live with the joy of feeling God's approval on our life. I hope you are in the company of those who feel the blessing and pleasure of God upon your life. Not only did God say that about Enoch, that Enoch was pleasing to him, the people who knew Enoch said the same thing. Listen to the same verse that we have read, this time from the New Living Translation. Before he was taken, he was known as a person who pleased God. What a great sentence. I want to be known as a person who is pleasing God. And I want people listening to this message to be known as ones who are pleasing to God. The Bible tells us how we can be pleasing to him. Turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. What a wonderful invitation from heaven. In this verse, God offers an open invitation to all who desire to to have a close relationship with him. The first step is to believe that God exists. There's an interesting uh, trend going on in the major religions of the world today. People are leaving religions for atheism. Atheism is somewhat on the rise. Leaving religion for atheism is often the next step after people discover that religion doesn't satisfy the soul. Rules never help. Regulations never make you feel closer to God. Some people make the mistake of giving up on God at the same time that they give up on religion. But that's the very tender moment when God is looking for people to win their hearts. God does not want us to have a religion. He wants us to have a close working relationship with him and discover the rewards he has for people who enter into that relationship. God does not push people away who seek to come close to him. Again, the same verse, chapter six, verse, chapter 11 and verse 6, in the, in the Passion Translation, puts it this way. God rewards the faith of those who give their passion and strength into seeking him. When you seek God, he will seek after you. The closer we move towards God, the closer he moves towards us. Sometimes we say, take a step towards God, and he will take a step towards you. Prophet Jeremiah put it this way, you will seek me and find me when you seek for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13, I believe there are people in the room and watching us today who are seeking a relationship with God and the invitation and the door is open to you to seek him with all your heart and find more than you ever imagined that you could find. The Bible has a lot to say about walking with God. The Apostle Paul invited people in Colossians to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you learn. May we be in a learning process of how to walk in a manner worthy that is pleasing to the the Lord. The Apostle John worded it this way. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Jesus, his son. What a beautiful invitation this is from heaven to come closer to God. 
So what did Jesus see in Enoch? God saw in him someone in whom he could have a close relationship and share the secrets of his heart. Do you know that God has secrets? He's looking for people to tell. Not that you go blab his secrets. You know, friends tell friends secrets just to keep and to enjoy. God has some secret things he wants to say to you. God shared with Enoch that his son, Methuselah, would become the oldest living human being. Isn't that interesting? He sh- and he said, he'll share your story for generations, for hundreds of years, of about the relationship that you and I had. God spoke with Enoch about his great-grandson who would be born by the name of Noah. And the people will say of him after he is born, out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, the one shall bring us relief, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the toil, painful toil of our hands. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 29. God shared with Enoch that one day the world as we know it would come to an end. And he knew this because God revealed to Jude, the earthly brother of Jesus, what he had taught Enoch. And this is what Enoch said, Behold, the Lord is coming with ten thousands of his holy one to execute judgment on all and affect all of the ungodliness of their deeds, of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against God. Jude, verses 14 and 15. Enoch knew that judgment was coming. He named his son Methuselah, whose name means after he dies, judgment is coming. And of course, this is a reference to the rise of Noah and the flood. Enoch knew that his great-grandson Noah would build an ark and save the world. He also knew that the next time that the world would be destroyed, it would not be by a flood or water, but it would be by fire. Peter wrote extensively about this in his letters. And Enoch's life is still warning people to repent and to follow Jesus. What did God see in Enoch? He saw a man whose heart was so pure that he could use him to model the day when followers of Jesus who are alive when he will come back to earth will be lifted up to heaven without dying and enter into the presence of God. What did God see in Enoch? God saw in him the genealogy of Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God. We find in Luke chapter 3 and verse 37 that Jesus was a direct descendant of Enoch. And while it's good to ask the question, what did God see in Enoch? It's equally important to ask the question, what did Enoch see in God? When Enoch walked with God, he felt loved. When Enoch walked with God, he felt no shame. When Enoch walked with God, he felt at peace. When Enoch walked with God, his questions were answered. When Enoch walked with God, his fears disappeared. When Enoch walked with God, he believed Nothing was impossible. Uh, One day, Enoch and God walked so far that God simply turned to Enoch and said to him, Dear one, we're closer to my house than we are to yours. Come home with me today. Today, an invitation is being extended to you from Enoch to walk closely with God. God wants to have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Do what Enoch did. Place your faith in Messiah, the one God sent to pay for your sins. Ask Jesus to forgive you for all of the sins that you have committed. And through believing in what Jesus did on the cross for you, you can have a close relationship with God. Ask him to open your ears to hear his voice and fill you with the Holy Spirit. You felt the presence of Jesus coming upon you. Write to me 
and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father God, thank you that you made the way into heaven and it's been open to us through Jesus. Help us to walk in agreement with you and in faith. Bless us and our families today to follow in the life of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.